Blog Talk Radio. Your journey begins right now. From the west coast of British Columbia to you listening around the world and blasting out into the universe, welcome to tonight's edition of Spaced Out Radio. Call us at 1-607-203-5344. Tweet us at Spaced Out Radio. Find Dave on Facebook at Spaced Out Radio. Or Skype us at Spaced Out Radio. Now, here's your host, Dave Scott. Good evening and welcome to Space Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Space Out Radio Network at spaceoutradio.com. As we come in from the frozen Canadian tundra, battle our way past the wild animals, sidestep Bigfoot, and enter Uncle Jim- Jimbo's cabin, stoke the fire, heat this place up, and broadcast you live on this Thursday night, early Friday morning, if you're on the East Coast. Here at SOR, we broadcast seven days a week. We want to be your official one-stop shop when it comes to the UFOlogy, conspiratorial, extraterrestrial, supernatural, and so much more. Hey, if you're on social media and you're on Twitter, how about giving us a follow, at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show, and you can ask to join our Spaced Out Radio group as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, S-O-R. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. And, of course, our website is spacedoutradio.com. New look, new launch, probably happening on Monday. At this time, as we do every night, we want to send a quick shout-out to our fans taking part in the Spaced Out Radio chat room, along with Paranormal Into the Night and Paranormal Forum. If you head to our website, spacedoutradio.com, you could click on Cat's Corner. Psychic Catherine Fallman will answer one lucky listener's submitted question per week. Tonight's show is brought to you by Rivulet Reiki and Readings, providing healings in person or at a distance. Space Out Radio listeners receive a 10% discount on pricing. Drop into purpleplates.com and help heal your body, mind, and soul. Drop into their site and heal yourself today. 80,000 people a month read the new Agora newspaper. Find out what's happening on the other side of politics, health, supernatural, paranormal, and so much more. And if you have a dollar and you have an iPhone, you can download Spirit Story Box. Spirit Story Box, the official ghost hunting app of Spaced Out Radio. Now, the last time we had Misha Johnson on Spaced Out Radio, we started to get heavily into her experiences with my lab projects and MKUltra. That was until the show got interrupted. Misha had had this happen before where shows she has been a guest on get hacked and taken over to the point where it can't go on anymore. That tells me and her that someone out there sometimes doesn't want her getting the message out. Misha has been a lifelong experiencer. She has her own radio show on the KCOR network out of Las Vegas. As well, she hosts weekly experiencer chats with people online who are trying to figure out what is going on. Her personal experiences are dark and detailed, from underground bases to coming face-to-face with reptilians and the fear of finding out that it's all tied to a shadow government that works behind the scenes with what we see today. Today, she tries to help and counsel people who are abductees and contactees and she tries to help make sense out of their traumatic experiences they are having. Misha, being a survivor herself, feels it's a great way to connect with those who are feeling that they have nowhere else to turn. Her goal is to supply that help, to help people survive and understand with clarity what is truly going on. Misha Johnson, welcome to Spaced Out Radio tonight. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on, Dave. It's always a pleasure to get to chat with you. Well, thank you. And um, it's going to be uninterrupted today, I'm sure of that. (laughs) Me me too. I am pushing for that as well. And you know what? I I still find it kind of weird that, you know, I've had certain guests on the show before that have been slightly controversial, much like yourself, much like Randy Kramer, where incidents seem to follow what happens. Why do you feel that is? Well, you know, I think that the the powers that be do not want the um, the the truth to get out there, and they have their own soft disclosure that they put out, and it it it's leaking out little by little. But when somebody starts talking about um, the things that are right in their face, 
they, you know, they, they have uh, people that they use in these cases that they can just trigger, and they'll do things that they would probably ordinarily do. Does it get annoying because you're just trying to help people out who have been put in this situation, yet in the meantime, you know, you're almost sandbagged by the message because the government or whoever it is that is trying to block your message continues to try and violate your own public right to the First Amendment, which is freedom of speech. Exactly. Exactly. It is the First Amendment. It is. And it is very important. And that's why with the groups that I have uh, on a weekly basis, I have two groups a week, that um, these are places for people that they they can go in and, and have their freedom of speech and share with people who know exactly how they feel. Now, I have the experience group every Sunday um, for it's actually I've split it because I have so much going on with the uh, my labs and such. So I have the ET contactee experience group for the first two hours, and um, that starts at 11:30 and goes to 1:30. And then from 1:30 to 3:30, um, I extended my group an extra hour so that I can then put uh, for the my labs and um, targeted individuals in K Ultra. And then of course. Um, they can just go to find that out by going to my Facebook group, which is uh, um, now there is one that's a very private group. So the best to maybe just make friends with me, and when you do, tell leave me a message and say that you know you're an MK Ultra or you're a target individual and that you'd like to join uh, my uh, MK Ultra uh, DID My Lab Monarch Super Soldier Target Individual Ritual Abuse and Support Group. That's a mouthpiece. I know that's a mouthful, but that's the name of my Facebook group for people who are having these kind of experiences. And then, of course, you can join my uh, Facebook Starfood Awakening and ET Experiencer group. And uh, so, so you can both find uh, on my website, starseedawakening.org. And I'll be talking about all types of different, and some ETs and and government and things like that. Uh, I have a a gallery on my website if they want to go to my gallery and and take a look at the pictures as I'm talking about them. You know, might give them a little bit of an understanding of what what I'm talking about and what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. So um, it's very interesting that in today's day and age, with the amount of information that is out there, And on a government level, when you see what somebody like John Podesta is doing in pushing Hillary Clinton for disclosure and what the government knows about extraterrestrials, Area 51, and everything in between, that people today are still being harassed by shadow governments when it comes to their own contact and what is happening with my labs as well as MKUltra. Yes, I see this in every group all the time. People are being unmercifully targeted and to the degree that, you know, the new generation type of psychotronics and uh, artificial intelligence, and, and it is just far to mount what I went through, for instance, um, because now they have advanced the technology <clears throat> to such a heightened degree that uh, these people are... 24 hours a day, they're being bombarded and bothered, and they're not even when they're out. Then they're being gang stalked. So it's uh, it's mm-hmm. pretty awful what people go through. Let's get into that later on in the show because we're going to get into some real heavy stuff here tonight with you because that's what you're all about. You're about being a whistleblower, so to speak, on what is truly happening. I would love you to introduce your story to our listeners for those who haven't heard it before in regards to when it started for you and your family. Okay. All right. Well, it started when I was two years old. Um, um, In actuality, I came from a mind-controlled family, an MKUltra family. A family had been pretty much been controlled um, possibly for a couple of generations, but at least I know within my family and the generation I was in. um, My father was in a secret society. He was a black magician. Uh, He actually was a functioning uh, 
black magician and would go around uh, and had illusion show, illusion shows. He was a hypnotist. hypnotist. Uh, he would go from um, city to city, basically with three of my siblings as his uh, assistants and would uh, go around and, you know, and, and, and entertain. But I believe there was a lot of um, other things that went on. You know, my my siblings never really remembered much of what went on on the road, uh, except for that two of them actually, one ran away while they were out on the road, the one that was a, a 14-year-old teenage brother. And then my sister, as soon as she came home at 16 years old, ran away. So you can tell it's something they didn't want to be doing. It wasn't like it was a wonderful limelight and, and, you know, exciting and everything. There was some undercurrents and some really terrible, fearful things that went on, I know, on the road. Um, Because my father was indeed mind-controlled, and he was the one that did my um, child-based mind-control. He was the one that did my, um, I guess you'd call it child Trauma torture from from uh, age two on, um, and you know I, I at this point I'd like to say one little quick thing, you know I'm not the result of what happened to me in my life and it's it's not who I am so I really uh, I'm just sharing a small portion of my experiences uh, just to kind of let people know that no matter what has happened to you in your life, um, you can transmute it um, to you know what I call um, a spiritual loving existence. And um, so I'll just go on. But I just wanted to say, you know, there's no, I don't believe in victims. And I, and I truly do believe that I chose to come into this life for reasons from everything from experience, experience in this life, and, you know, uh, as I've experienced other lives, but experience in this life and, and learning so much because it has given me so much knowledge about what the other side is like, um, uh, the dark side is like, what it is like to be um, a victim of these things, and how you can pull yourself out of it and survive. Um, so, um, to you know, to go on. So at two years old, I, I was my father started the trauma base. Um, I don't need to go into details about that, other than his um, job was to break me into to get my the, the dissociated disorder started. That's that's the job of the uh trauma the uh, the handler to do that. Uh the, the I should say. And um from there he would take me to what were supposedly churches and uh, I saw other children. Uh, I was very terrified until it finally came to me why I was uh, of of the basement because basement is where he had, there was actually a tunnel to the to to a, a big big vacant house that they used to say was haunted just kitty corner across from us maybe oh maybe eight hundred yards away uh, if, if that and uh, so that's where they took us children um, I don't don't know about the filming or any pedophilia as far as films. I don't have any memory of that. If I did, it's it's buried away. I just remember the ritual ceremonies, the ritual abuse. Um, to a degree, I guess it would be satanic, uh, you know, but I, I, I also don't believe in the whole thing about Satan. I believe it was very dark and, and uh, the people had uh, their own agenda. But um, I choose to believe that um, it it isn't connected to per se the biblical religious yeah. Satan. That's my opinion on it. Mm-hmm. So um, my my father, you know, continued with what he did. He was also very physically abused, very very physically abusive to to all of us, including um, the other siblings and my and my mother, um, which is also part of it. So. For people who feel like they've been having these kinds of experiences, and there's also this abuse in the family, these are these are the normal things that go on in a ritual abuse family. Um, then at age 12, I was put into what they call service, which is um, I was a monarch. Uh, 
I, my training started as a monarch at, at 12. Um, basically, pre-puberty, um, uh, sexual um, training and such as that. Uh, so all the time, though, through this, I also was having what I call my saving grace, which is ET contact. Um, my first ET contact, I remember, is uh, at three years old. I was uh, um, there was these three little guys who I called BG. Um, don't know why I called them, but that's what I call them, the BGs, the bears. And uh, they um, were furry, and about the same size I was at at three. And they would often come and take me out of my house, and I had I had such a warm feeling, and they made me laugh, and they made that part of my life livable. And, and uh, I think there's what kept me kept me alive, to tell you the truth, the different types of ETs. Um, they came with me most of my youth, uh, my very young life, and then at about um, eight eight years old, a what I called the tall willowy one came in, which was a uh, uh, the one that's kind of a um, a tall mantis gray. He was he's kind of a cross between it. He's not a, he's not a gray because he's not short and little, but he has the large head, big eyes. But he had this whitey skin and uh, was willowy. It, you know, didn't feel like he had bones. And that one took me and was. Uh, watching over me all the time as well. Um, it was um, really also saved my life knowing that that, uh, that was there. Um, let me see. I'm really good now at, at, at questions of, about, you know, if you have any questions about my youth or anything like that, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that kind of covers what went on in my early part of my life and until uh, until I was a teenager. Misha, how did you stay living? Because a lot of people going through what you went through, whether it was the sexual abuse, the physical abuse at the hands of these type of rituals, would have just had been pushed to enough is enough and probably committed suicide or ran away to start a whole new life elsewhere. Why did you continue it? Because uh, I truly think because of the ETs, they they helped me a lot, and um, there were had many times where I had the suicide program. I mean, absolutely, that's there. Um, it's there if you ever decide to take off. That's part of the programming. But I believe uh, that my my uh, alters, my dissociative disorder, also helped save my life. Uh, in fact, a, a specific time when one of the alters came out, um, she said that she was born at age three and that she was the one that was keeping me alive. And if it wasn't for her, I could not have handled it. I would have died. Um, so understand that she's speaking through me about this other part of me that she is aware of. Where, how, wherever I how was not aware of her, as well as I wasn't aware of a male who was the one that did the rituals, uh, was the one who was the perpetrator in some of the w- rituals, which of course was me. Being, but that was the way they programmed the altars to to be. So um, that way, your altars don't know each other. Um, they. And they can't remember, and so everything's all compartmentalized. And you can't you can't remember because you don't even know you have ulcers, so you don't know the details and such. And the details didn't start coming out until I started working very very hard on handling and working hard on finding out why I had dissociated disorder. Um, working with therapists for a lot of the years at first, and then finally uh, doing hypnotherapy. Um, and I, I truly think hypnotherapy, which was one of the tools that they used to make the altars, also is also one of the tools to to release you from the altars as well, and to uh, also integrate those altars. Mm. It's almost like you were a human sacrifice 
to whatever they were preaching to, whether it was Satan, whether it was reptilians, whether it was, you know, some kind of very evil god or goddess out there. And you mentioned that there were others such as you out there. Were these human people performing these rituals on you or were they extraterrestrial? At the first, they were definitely human people. That's all my memory of it, is human people. Uh, whether there's somebody behind pulling the strings, I couldn't tell you. They were the deacons in the church. They were um, relatives. That That's the type of people that they were. Uh, and, you know, my m- there was a very large cover because uh, as my father got out of the magic, he went from magic into being a uh, minister, which is... <laughs> kind of an odd thing, but but it makes sense when you think about that's one of the covers to these uh, these uh, black masses and these, you know, ritual abuse is uh, a religious cover. And it, uh, I'm not saying that religion is the problem here. I'm saying they use it as, uh, you know, building as, you know, as the, as the deacons and all of those are the people that were part and playing part in this whole, you know, a sort of thing. So, um, in 67, I had my first encounter with a reptilian. And this is not a negative experience, by the way. I was taken by the willowy one um, to, in the middle of the night. And, well, incidentally, I will tell, tell you that if anybody sees animals, deer, owls, different things like that at their window uh, on a regular basis, it's probably the ETs coming and getting them. So this is what they would do. Is they'd show up as like a deer at, at my window, and I just knew it was time to go, and I and I was ready. And so this particular time, um, I remember I was in bed. The next thing I remember is I was standing underneath a huge UFO. Um, it was the – there was – turning wheels going opposite directions. Uh, right above me, there was three of them. Um, the, I could feel this um, this energy built behind me, you know, very, and I, I kind of to the side, I was able to basically just look a little bit to the side because you're pretty much paralyzed, you know, uh, and you can move your eyes, but that's about it. And so I, I knew that something was above me. I can't tell you how all that stuff. I'm a psychic as well. That's part of the reason that they are, are interested and were interested in me. Um, I'm all, also a natural medium. So um, so the next thing I know is there's the, the willowy one, and the willowy one is actually um, um, I'm on okay, but as I... See the one in, 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 at, at the front of me, and he says, um, "Do not be concerned. This is necessary for the hybrid." Uh, and so I figured that was my real first, um, maybe gynecological or insemination or something like that. But at that very night, I don't know if it was before or after, I saw some figures in the back. Uh, there was like three of them, very tall. Um, and I, and they were kind of in, in not in the back, but kind of in the shadows. I really couldn't see very well. And I and I had this extreme connection to and recognized the energy of one of them. And um, and I said, you know, I I know who you are. I I I know who you are. And at that moment, um, one of them stepped out and he dropped his hood. He had a hood on, and it was this tall reptilian. And that was the last thing I remembered. I had this recollection of him. I remembered him, and then, then I was asleep. So I don't remember anything else about that. But he was later on. He came back into my life, um, and I will then I go into that later. But he was a protector then. So um, let's see. Uh, any questions before I go? I'm going to go to a team to talk a little bit. No, I'm just, we're all tied to what you are saying right now as you put your own timeline together with the experiences that you had, which leads you to today where you are now counseling people into what they are going through. So I think it's important for us to learn. Right. Okay, okay. Well, um, another thing is important to know is my father um, on his deathbed 
uh, made a confession to me and said he was so sorry for what he had done because by then, by probably, oh, I don't know, probably in the 70s, he started coming, I believe, out of it. Um, he was no longer, uh, I believe, at all in the MK Ultra. Maybe they released him. Maybe, you know, at a certain age, you just don't, you're not important anymore. And uh, if you're not in any problems, you know, them, I guess it's possible they just finally let you go. But uh, uh, but my father was dying, and, and of course, like I said, my his my siblings had nothing to do with him, and they didn't even wouldn't even come to the hospital or to his, even to his funeral. But he told me he said he was so very sorry because he said I could not allow anything else to happen. Your mother could not, and that's what he said. I couldn't allow anything else to happen. Your mother could not have handled any more children dying. I had to give them mm-hmm. you. Um, so I, it, it, it appears to be that the very interesting part that you need to know now is that I had siblings that I had um, nine other siblings, and they are all but um, all five of the deaths that happened in childhood of all of them where they were nobody made it past a year except for one who I believe she made it longer because she was actually in the hospital for the last three years of her life with tuberculosis and meningitis. So, um, but the rest of them didn't make it past a year, year and a half. And uh, I believe, though that was all my father said before he passed, I believe that he um, had to give up the, the was they wanted him to give up each kid, you know, uh, probably they'd been trying and turned him down, whatever, stopped it, didn't do it, wasn't cooperating. And each each one of these children died in very strange ways. I mean, from uh, one was hit on the back of the head supposedly by a, a, a neighborhood child and died. One had uh, pneumonia and died. One died of carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, one with the crib death. And then the last one, uh, which I think might have been the one that, that was going to be turned over, or maybe not, I, I, uh, that one died of, um, was, was stillborn. Hmm. So I was a family of 10 kids. Which, uh, and now I know, uh, one by one, all the rest of the siblings have gone except for one. So uh, all my, my parents are both gone. There's really, you know, no reason to keep it quiet anymore. We are talking with Misha Johnson tonight on Space Out Radio. We are talking My Labs. We are talking MK Ultra. We're going to get into it big time as we round the corner here. We're going to hop out for our first break of the night. When we come back, we're going to learn more from Misha Johnson. This is Patrick Webster Small, and I'm going to bring you the Webster Phenomena right here on Space Out Radio, Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Every week, I'm going to bring you the freshest information on the globe. I'm bringing you guys the truth, extraterrestrials in the sky, prophecy, chemtrails, rainbow spot, the seventh angel, biblical skies, ancient gods, ghosts, spirits, see it, hear it. So let's do this every Monday night. I'll see you back here at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? 
Did you know that Spaced Out Radio is live seven days a week? This is Jim Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekend. You can listen to my show, Spaced Out Weekend, every Saturday and Sunday night starting at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. On Spaced Out Weekend, we like to delve into the paranormal, even the newest technologies that have enhanced modern-day ghost hunting. And sometimes, we'll get a little creative and dabble into the crypto world, UFOs, and much, much more. So tune in at www.spacedoutradio.com on the weekends and listen to me, Jim Tyson, on Spaced Out Weekend. Hi there, this is Jolene with Rivulet Reiki and Reading, and I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr, or my Facebook page, Rivulet r and to set up an appointment for relaxation, Reiki, or readings, no matter where you are. Spaced Out Radio listeners will also receive 10% off their first visit. It's time for you to make time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here, you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. Read articles from our very talented staff and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. SpacedOutRadio.com. Always live, always interactive. Ready to find out what's flying up in the sky? Me too. Hi there, this is Rich Giordano. Please join me every Sunday night at 7 for the AZ UFO Show. It's a fast and compelling two-hour show on UFOs, extraterrestrials, conspiracy theories, and much more. Every week we will have great guests and great topics to try and answer the ultimate question, are we alone in this universe or not? So tune in to the AZ UFO Show with me, Rich Giordano, right here on the Spaced Out Radio Network at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to connect with Dave and his guests? Learn more at spacedoutradio.com for the latest news, features, photos, and articles. Spacedoutradio.com is where you can stay up to date on what's happening around the world and up in the stars. And now, back to Dave Scott. Welcome back to Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us on Spaced Out Radio. Tomorrow night, our guest will be making his monthly appearance. We're going to be talking all things alien. Our Keith Andrews will be back as he does his monthly show on the first Friday of every month. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our Spaced Out Radio group as well as Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, S-O-R. And, of course, our YouTube channel is Spaced Out Radio Show. You can click the subscribe button for that. And, of course, our website is spacedoutradio.com. Tonight we are talking all things iLab and MKUltra and extraterrestrial with Misha Johnson. And, Misha, you are pretty good friends with our Keith Andrews as well. Yes, I am. Love Keith Andrews. He uh, comes to my support group, and that's where I met him. He came to my group a couple of years ago, and um, he's a mesmerizing fellow, and he's got so yes, much he information, is. and he's so right on about his information. A lot of people out there don't believe that one person like Keith could be in contact with 30-plus extraterrestrial species. It sounds a lot far-fetched for a lot of people. Why do you believe him? Well, because, because I'm in touch with a lot of different types of ETs myself. So I, if, I cannot uh, judge his experience unless I judge my own, um, because I also um, do not have that... Um, I'm not taking a board anymore. I do, do, do astral experiences where I, I do remember having a um, connection. But um, I first was in front of a council, and I, I will probably tell you, I'll tell you about that a little bit later because it goes along with it, my experience and what happened. So I saw a lot of different, um, there was at least 10 different types on that council. Um, and also I uh, do have the, um, 
channeling. I channel uh, a large majority of different types of ETs in, uh, in galactic language. Um, that may sound a little odd to some people, but it, there's many of us that are being asked to uh, communicate and translate, and um, we're doing it. So uh, the message that they are sending is, is really one of love and and compassion for Earth and Earth people, and they want to help. Um, but they cannot come and rescue us. They cannot interfere unless you ask for help. And they certainly will not interfere, um, you know, I'm talking about positive ETs who, want to, who are galactic connection to you. They certainly won't interfere unless you are open and ask them to communicate with you. In fact, they, they sent me a message some time ago, uh, and they told me that um, they've been talking to so many, many people and that they're not listening, and they just want them to open up and listen to them because they can't help if we don't listen. So um, I, I'm sure that Keith understands what I'm, where I'm coming from with that as well. I have a question from Gail in Paranormal Into the Night. She is asking about your father. What group was he associated with? Rosicrucian. Rosicrucian. Um, All right. Also, I have Masons in my family, but my father was not a Mason. He was a Rosicrucian. He was a magician. In fact, uh, I'll tell you an experience. Uh, uh, even my mother shared this, and this was when he was in his training time before even any children were, were born. He, he came home one night and he told my mother, he said, I've learned so much and there's so many things that are unseen in this world and there's so much that we can do and you can learn about it. And he says, but it comes with such a great, great price. Um, and then he put a cup. There, I, there was a cup in the middle of the kitchen table and he was sitting there and he moved it with his mind. And um, that gave mom, a, you know, an example of some of the many things he could do. Uh, when I say he was a magician and an illusionist, I believe that he really had a lot of abilities. Um, and in fact, you know, he, people can look him up if they want to. His name is uh, Dr. Regar, R-E-G-O-R, Dr. Regar, the great Dr. Regar. Great London, no, no, I'm sorry. It's called the Great London Ghost Show. It's his, uh, it's his show. Um, and uh, he did it for many years. Um, so um, Rosicrucians, um, and I'm not saying all Rosicrucians, but there are different sects. There's different degrees of all these organizations. And there's some really great Mason people, and I'm just great Rosicrucians, but my father, uh, it is part of what he was trained. That's part of where he was trained, I should say. Scott has a question in Paranormal Into the Night, and he's asking, Misha, do all or none of the other known ETs out there have DNA? Well, I'm only going to answer questions that I know. Um, I, I would say there are some that have DNA, but I, you know, I don't absolutely know that answer. Um, uh -huh. I would imagine just about all of them would have DNA unless they're robotic uh, or made cloned. Clones may not have DNA. But still, our, our government or factions of our government is doing a clone project where they're using DNA from our people to make clones. So does that not mean that there must be some DNA even in those clones, even if it's a minute amount? I don't know. Well... I wonder about the greys, though, because the greys, from what I have learned, they almost seem to be like a, an artificial intelligence because they have no feelings. They they seem to be just like worker bees where they don't share any emotions or anything along those lines. So it wouldn't surprise me if they are like an artificial intelligence. And to me, that right. wouldn't include DNA strands. Right, and that would be like the robotic type. Because yes. uh, I, I know that I saw grays and I also saw Zeta Reticulus, I think. They're completely different. The grays being the ones that are, you know, the robotic type uh, cloned um, specifically many, many different groups of ETs for the, the grunt work, basically. 
because mm-hmm. uh, you know you need somebody with a lot of lot less in, with no emotion to handle people who are full of emotion. So when they're abducting and everything, you know, people talk that about that all the time that they 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 do lack emotions. However, other people will talk about how ETs are kind and loving. Those can't be great. So. There are so many different types of, let's say, what we put in quotation mark grays, but there's also, there's Zeta Reticulum, so many different types of gray mantis. There's a, people just kind of, you know, log all grays together, and they're just not. There's so many different types. We are talking with Misha Johnson tonight on Space Out Radio, My Lab, MK Ultra. Are these experiments still being performed on people today? in regards to the shadow governments that are causing these experiments? Oh, absolutely. Um, Much more, though, psychotronically, but of course, in order to put an implant in, somebody has to be taken somewhere. So if there have, some of the psychotronics are done through implants and others are done through frequencies. So um, some may not have even ever seen the inside of the, the facility, but they're still being targeted and being used in psychotronic warfare. Um, mm-hmm. Hope that answered that question. I guess the reason why I'm asking that is because with technology today and with the amount of people that are on the planet, would they not have fallen or found all the information that they need to find out of trying to control people by now? You would think, but they're still doing things. Um, they're still, the whole, the end game is control. The end game is controlling the people, having them do exactly what they want them, and not, you know, just being mindless drones themselves. So um, I, I don't imagine they'll quit until they think that they've surpassed what they plan on being the end game. Elizabeth Anglin is asking in Spaced Out Radio's chat room, what is psychotronic warfare? Psychotronic warfare is frequency-driven uh, um, waves, I guess you could say. What, what, what they'll, let me give you an example. They'll take an, an implant or put an implant in somebody. Put in, many people have several implants. So they have an implant in their head. Um, they have an implant in their, behind their, um, their um, eyes. Uh, so they are able to send some kind of a frequency in, and it's a, a basis of, of controlling. Now, this is not my expertise. My my partner, who uh, who is a co-facilitator on my support groups now, she is a Solaris Blue Raven. Now, you need to have her on your show because she can talk to you all about the psychotronics. I I am uh, an M- a monarch. Um, first generation, I'm, I'm quite a bit older. I'm a first generation. I don't know all the ins and outs of the psychotronic. It's, um, they use the cell towers. They use the satellites. It's all satellite technology, satellite uh, lifetime feed technology that they can actually control people um, through these frequencies, whether they do it through a, a, an implant or whether they're able to just know the frequency and be able to do it. Um, there's a couple of shows I would say to this gal that she should check and she'd understand about psychotronic warfare. If she gets the, the show um, a Control Factor, it's an older movie, probably 19, 2009 or eight or something like that, but um, a very good movie. It's called Control Factor. Of course, Manchurian Candidate is another one. These are an example of to show you a little bit about the psychotronic. But again, if anybody wants to know, tell them to check in on Solaris Blue Raven. She's also on KCOR Radio, and uh, she can um, she can give you the answers to that. What is the purpose, then, of the shadow governments doing this? Are they trying to create the perfect super soldier for some sort of battle that may or may not ever happen, or are they doing it to try and control mankind with the ability to at least one day bring the population of the planet down? 
or the latter. I believe that they're actually for both in both cases. The super soldiers are are not ne- necessarily what they're going to use at the end. They're using them right now. So many of the men that I are in my group and women uh, that are having super soldier experiences, they're having them during the astral experience. They're having them during the dream time. They're they're sometimes fighting aliens. They're sometimes uh, kidnapping people. There's all kinds of different things that they are using them for right now. They are also, um, you, know, you know, you have your uh, secret space program. These are all things that they're using these super soldiers in. Uh, super soldiers are usually groomed from babies, and um, most of the time they are adopted or they're from an orphan, orphanage and you know, but or they're adopted into a family that is also an MK Ultra family, uh, and they, they have a handler. Um, some of them, like Keith, had the same kind of thing. Keith uh, could have definitely been used as a super soldier, except that they couldn't use him. He made his ET stopped that from happening. So, uh, but they were grooming him to be a super soldier. I have no doubt they, they were grooming him to be a psychic super soldier, because you don't just have super soldier; you have psychic super soldiers. You also have the genetics uh, that they use for the super soldiers. Uh, they've got, you know, hybrid programs for these super soldiers. They have clone programs with these super soldiers. So then, of course, they also, they in game being, dominance and control, population control, you know, killing the, uh, the, the public off uh, to make it a more uh, controllable amount of people. Right. For people who aren't familiar with super soldiers, what is a super soldier experience? Okay. Uh, okay, a super soldier experience uh, mm, might be something like uh, um, they go to bed at night and they wake up um, fully you know, maybe outfitted in, in a uniform or or in uh, or, or or maybe not even a uniform, but they have guns. They're, they're uh, carrying armory of some type. Um, they battle. They will battle different alien groups. Uh, and and, they, and I'm not saying that is a positive thing because in a lot of cases they realize that they're the enemy against uh, peaceful aliens. Um, they might also be, like I said, kidnap uh, somebody. I know uh, where people been taken in a situation where they they're kind of living in another life. Uh, they're um, how would I put it? They're they're pretending to be somebody else, and they're like a double spy or something like that. So there's things like that. Um, I'm not a super soldier, so. I can't say too much more at, than mm-hmm. what people have shared with me in the group. Also, never. And super soldiers uh, might be going to a jump room like uh, Randy Kramer and Andrew Pashakio um, and being taken off off the planet. Yeah, and that's where the story gets really interesting when you start thinking of the fact of the secret space program that we have been going to Mars, we've been going to Saturn's moon Titan, we've been going to Venus, as well as other places around our solar system for literally decades since we received technology from the extraterrestrials. Does that story still fascinate you to this day that we do have that technology to get around, yet it's still showing us with NASA in the lunar rovers, the Mars rovers, and being so basic and getting more and more basic on a daily basis. I mean, NASA doesn't even have a space shuttle anymore. We have to rely on the Russians to get us to and from the space station now. Yeah, it's very, it's quite, really quite laughable that, that they really think people are so naive that they don't... Uh, that they accept that we don't have a state space program. It, well, all the time we have, uh, uh, we have put into play the uh, and weaponized weaponization of of uh, you know the satellites and things like that. 
ever since Star Wars, we, we've been weaponizing um, space. So I just I find it really crazy that people actually still believe that. I mean, I went and watched the, the movie Martian, and though it was a good movie, it was laughable because it was like, are you kidding me? At any moment, I'm thinking, okay, you, you, there's somebody who's going to, He's going to go on the underground and he's going to find the whole civilization. It gets, it's uh, it's so laughable to think that people really believe that we are not more advanced than that. But but people have been programmed for a long time to believe. I mean, they they programmed us from the beginning when we go to school in our history and they change history and it's 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 really a joke. I have a couple of questions from Paranormal Into the Night. They're personal ones for you. Okay. Uh, KJ, KJ is asking, Misha, how many types of aliens do you have regular contact with, and what do you feel is the main purpose for you to be chosen? Um, okay. Well, I feel, and they have told me that I am going to be a translator when the time of great change comes. There is at least 10 different types in the consortium. Um, There are no gray ones, but uh, there are um, Arcturians, and there's a reptilian type. There's, of course, several human types. Uh, Even though they're human, that doesn't mean they speak our language, because they don't. Um, In some of the cases, uh, there are translators, of course. Um, so there's quite a few different types. There's a dromeda, there's a blue type, there's there's types that look kind of like they're fairy looking, and and there's some with funny ears, there's some with uh, animal kind of faces. Uh, they are all uh, that I have encountered in my experience as of late are are humanoid in a way. They're humanoid, meaning that they have they they had two arms and two legs, you know. Um, but um, they're all peaceful, loving types of beings, and that's the majority out there. And you know, like uh, they certain whistleblowers have said that there's, and I could be wrong about this figure, but before different types of uh, ET groups, uh, well, I I'm sure there's many many more than that. But I believe there's there is. Uh, a tremendous amount of and they're communicating with not just me with a lot of other people and they and all the people have been told the same thing they are supposed to translate when the time of great change comes and i believe that is when they told me that i the visual that they were showing me because when they talk to me it, it comes in ways of whole thought patterns and sentences and you know it's like a whole whole picture with a whole story behind it and I saw that they were like hybrids that were coming down and them being the bridge between our world, in fact that's what they said we're the bridge between your world and our world which that would explain the hybrid program and that I have been in the hybrid program I've been showed um, many children, I'm presented with children um, a particular time I was taken into one of the nurses shown um, the kids of all different ages, different types of ET looking children, different colors, some reptilian even. And um, I said, well, which one is mine? And they said, they all are. So a lot of people are in the hybrid program. There's a lot of hybrids in all different races. Mm-hmm. Pat Penn in the Space Out Radio chat room is asking, how long until this big change, and are there any signs we need to observe? You know, I can't give you a date. Um, I don't think anybody really knows a date. I do believe that it's, it's definitely within our lifetime and uh, my lifetime, you know, and I'm, I'm um, older, so a little bit older. So I definitely think within ten to ten years, I think, but I I can't say that for sure. I just know that when I saw myself in the imagery that they showed me, I was not much older than I am now. 
I didn't look my phone. So I, I, you know, it could be three years to ten years. I, I don't know. It's... I'm going to ask you one more question in regards to a personal experience here, and then we are going to cut out to break. This comes from Claudia. Claudia is asking or saying she has noticed that where there is a lot of activity of sightings of UFOs in the areas there, there seem to be crystal caves nearby. Do you happen to know if ETs use crystals for communicating or traveling? You know, my my mine would only be an assumption. I've seen crystals like like uh, I have seen crystal type things in the ship on them. But can I say that they communicate with them uh, quite possibly, but that's just a sense I have. I have no absolute proof of that. But it makes sense. And we also know that so many of uh, of the people who are um, psychic, we, we use crystals. We use crystals for some of our mediums. Um, so, yeah, if it's, if it's good enough for us, I'm sure that it's definitely good enough for them. Awesome. We are talking with Misha Johnson tonight on Space Out Radio. My lab, MK Ultra, is the topic. We're going to get into the secret stuff right after we come back from this break. You're listening to Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We'll be right back. The Phoenix Lights, Roswell, secret military aircraft, flying saucers. Let's check out the sky together. Hi, this is Rich Giordano, host of the AZ UFO Show right here on the Spaced Out Radio Network. Every Sunday night at 7, we hit the airwaves to talk about the phenomenon of unidentified flying objects and more. We want to hear your stories. Maybe you've seen what many others have seen. Only one way to find out, the AZ UFO Show on Sunday nights on the Spaced Out Radio Network on spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is James Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekends. And I know you're enjoying tonight's show with Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio. I just wanted to remind you that Spaced Out Radio continues on the weekends with me. On Spaced Out Weekend, we hit the airwaves at www.spacedoutradio.com starting at 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. We have great guests with interesting chats regarding all things paranormal, supernatural, cryptozoological, and much, much more. So tune in to Spaced Out Weekend and give us a listen. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. Need a break but don't have the time? Tired of life's running around? Hi, this is Jolene from Revealet Relaxation and Readings. Let me help you in your time of need. From Reiki to Realm Readings, I can help provide you therapy for your mind, body, and soul. Check out my website at rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr. And if you're a listener of Spaced Out Radio, receive 10% off your first session, Rivulet Relaxation and Ratings. And don't forget to give my Facebook page a like. It's time for you to make some important time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here, you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. Read articles from our very talented staff and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. SpacedOutRadio.com. Always live, always interactive. The Webster Phenomena airs on Spaced Out Radio on Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. I'm your host, Patrick Webster Small, and I discovered extraterrestrials in the atmosphere which led me to more discoveries developing the Webster Phenomena, which is the occurrence of extraterrestrials throughout nature. I will explain the Webster Phenomena and all my recent discoveries every Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time, right here on Spaced Out Radio. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. 
don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box, the iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box, the spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Want to call in to Space Dial Radio? You can. 1-607-203-5344. You can tweet us at Space Dial Radio or send us a message on Facebook at Space Dial Radio. And now, back to the show, here's Dave Scott. Welcome back to Space Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Always a pleasure to be with you. As tomorrow night on the show, our Keith Andrews will be back with his monthly alien talk as it is the first Friday of the month once again. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show, and you can ask to join our private Spaced Out Radio group. On Instagram, you can follow us at Dave Scott, S-O-R. Our YouTube channel is Spaced Out Radio Show. And, of course, our website, spacedoutradio.com. Tonight we are talking my lab and MK Ultra with Misha Johnson. She's a lifelong experiencer with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring Misha back in. Misha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dave, for having me on the show. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to get to a couple more questions here from our audience members, and then I would like – to get into the darker side of the government with you. Gloria is asking from Paranormal Into the Night, what is the purpose of being a monarch? Um, Okay, um, I'm I'm glad you got back on that because I did want to share some stories of uh, some experiences I had about the monarch. Uh, Monarch is a sex slave. The purpose behind that is to use... uh, they use the monarchs in ways of uh, transporting information. Um, most of uh, the monarchs, I shouldn't say most of it, some of the monarchs, uh, such as I know I have had this, is I had um, evidently a photogenic memory at some time in my life because I was used to transport mes- uh, messages back and forth uh, between everything from dignitaries to politicians and such as that. They also are used to put people in um, in positions where they can be um, can be. Uh, mm. I have a little block sometimes come in when we start talking about this, so just bear with me. No problem. So let's say a politician, they want them to vote a certain way. Well, they bring in a monarch and put them in a precarious sexual uh, situation where they now uh, are being uh, blackmailed into giving and voting the way they want them to vote. So they use them in that way. Um, they use them as um, party favors. In, in, in fact, I, I will share an experience. Um, I'd like to tell the story of how I got there, but I'll just just throw this story, this experience in. Um, I It was in Seattle, Washington, and I was in a bus with several women, young women my age, 18, 19, and then there were some young men, 11, 12, 13, I would imagine that was about the age group. We were taken to, in, to by this bus to this a big fancy house. Um, there was big iron gates. When we pulled up, the iron gates opened. The bus was taken around to the back, and all of us were taken out and the back stairs. And, and you could see, you know, it was like a, a, a big party going on. There was, you know, you could hear sounds, there was, you could hear music, the lights were all on, and it was like that. We thought we were going to a party. But when we Uh, was taken out into the back stairs and such and put in different rooms and stuff for the party favors. So we're party favors. A lot of these really sick individuals, the pedophile and all of that, are very much into the really sick three, very sick sex things. And so, um, you know, they're taken good care of uh, by by our handlers who 
who then have us do different and you know, to make them happy and keep everybody happy. Whether you're like in this party I remember that there were dignitaries, there was politicians. I have um a very severe um block on names and it it it, it uh, boils over into my my own life and trying to remember names of anything. But um uh, so I can see faces when and then I put it together to get who the name is, but the names don't come out to me. Uh, but I saw politicians there, dignitaries. I actually saw aliens at that party as well. Uh, I saw Hollywood people, um, very big, well-known Hollywood people that uh, Bryce Taylor and a lot of the other women have talked about. Hmm. So that's what they use the monarchs for. Also, they'll use it for the psychic things as well because uh, monarchs, can remote view or they can be trained to remote view. So we did remote viewing, and uh, in a lot of cases when you remote view, you are uh, using your psychic abilities and sometimes to go in and and control people or attack people or Mm -hmm. like that. Joe in Paranormal into the Night is asking, lots of young children remember being taken by someone or something, but as adults they don't think they are still being taken. Are they still being taken? Um, I would say probably not as likely now, uh, depending on what age group these, these, these people are talking. You know, I was... Uh, I was you know, 18 years old in the, in their late 60s. So um, if they were in that age group, then um, possibly their first generation. So yeah, they it continued it continued on for me until um, about 1990. No, about 2001, 2004. Now nah, probably in about 2005 was probably the last time that I was. Um, accessed, I'd say, um, to my knowledge. Because uh, when you have times of total missing years, missing years, you don't remember. You don't remember working at a job. You don't remember about the job. You don't remember any of those things. When they go in and they access you and they use you, then they go and they take sections of your memory. Just They just wipe it right out. And if it happens to be a time where you, you know, a year and an entire year can just be gone, gone completely, and that's happened to me many, many times. Okay. Claudia is wondering, since the aliens do a lot of work in our dream state, are they making holograms for us to experience what they want us to see and what we can travel in throughout the universe? Well, I definitely think that they make holograms. Um, I've had experiences where I was in the hologram, um, and they, as for traveling all over, I believe that a lot of us feel that we are traveling all over. Um, but holograms can be used for a couple of sources, in my opinion. <laughs> as, they can um, teaching you some things. Uh, they, they want you to be able to have certain and advance your certain your abilities and such like that. So they will do that. Like for instance, I had an experience where um, I was in a hologram where there was a, a three other uh, human ETs, and they said, "This is a, uh, a manifestation. This is to show you how you can manifest." And um, long story short, we had three people. They asked me what I wanted, and I and what I said. Well, I love the I love to swim, so uh, but I don't want to swim in the ocean, but I love to swim because immediately that came into my mind. I don't want to swim swim in the ocean because in one of my past lives I was eaten by a shark, um, so I, uh, I I don't care to swim in the ocean. So then that very second I was in a lake swimming around, feeling great. And then the next one said I want to see rainbow like I've never seen before, and then immediately showed a rainbow to all of us. Beautiful. And then the next person was a man, and he said, you know, I, I haven't had, I'm kind of been at a bad week, and, you know, it was going on about things. And all of a sudden, up popped this horrible-looking monster. It was just terrible, scary-looking thing. And then immediately it left, and they said, 
do you not understand that it is so important that you must clear away the fear and the anger before you come to this side because you manifest everything immediately here, uh, instantly here. So um, that was a lesson in in several respects for me. And so I, I go, yes, they they teach people things in the hologram. You probably travel as well. Corey in the Space Out Radio chat room is my booking coordinator who helps get me uh, guests for this show. I'm I'm really lost without her um, when, since she's joined the team. And she was curious in regards to the little hairy alien guy that you saw that almost looks like an Ewok because she has yes. actually had one of those beings in her house as well. Do you mind just explaining what they are in your terms or what you know about them? Oh, I, I would love to, and, and I'm glad you brought out that they were Ewoks, because when I saw Star Wars, I, like, hollered out in the screen and in the, in the uh, movie theater and said, oh, my God, that's them, that's them, because that's what the Ewoks, that's what the Bee Gees look like. They look like Ewoks. If you look at my picture, at the time I, I, I got that picture, which was, you know, some 25 years ago, um, Star Wars uh, was not out yet. And so um, when I saw the Ewoks, I, re- I realized that's them with clothing on. You know, that's them. Uh, they were very friendly. They were chittery-chattery type. Um, they also had kind of like a, um, how would I do it? It was like a little whispery kind of kind of thing. I could hear that. Um, they uh, also took me out flying above my houses and my, you know, and here I'm a very young child and they, I think, taught me how to fly or allowed me to fly over the tops of the houses. Um, and I believe it was much more than just being levitated up to a ship. I believe they were taking me flying. That, that was my feeling. So they're lo- good little guys who look to take care of people. They're good little guys. Did she? Nice. How about her? Were her positive experiences? As far as she knew, and well, yeah. you know, her comment is she didn't just say Ewok. Oh Jesus! You know, I know Corey is smiling right now. Yes, they are good ETs, Corey. As uh, I know you're listening in right now, um, but she actually saw hers in her laundry room of her basement, and it kind of startled her a little bit. Oh, of course. Yeah. And and she's an adult. You know, imagine yourself being a child. It's a lot different because uh, as an adult, we have preconceived ideas of what is weird and what's scary and what's not supposed to be there in your laundry room. (laughs) Yes. So uh, I'd love to talk to her about it. Tell her to join Starseed Awakening uh, um, Facebook you know, group and let's talk. I will definitely get her to see. Uh, this is her comments right now. She's saying they just about bumped into each other and it was scary. There were three shimmering lines, then it disappeared. Aha. Yes. Yes. Well, mine came in threes as well. I, I for some reason, reason they do come. They always came in, in, in uh, a group of three and, uh, they do help you. Shimmering lines make sense. That definitely makes sense. Mm-hmm. She's but saying the. She, she's saying. Yeah, she's saying it was scared. I will get Corey to get in contact with you regarding that. I'm going to continue with some questions right now. Uh, Claudia in Paranormal Into the Night is asking, is the secret government entering into our dream state like the aliens for mind control? Yes, yes, they absolutely are, and especially right now, it seems to be a, a lot in the last year, two years. Uh, um, they are running scenarios in our mind. Uh, there's all kinds of things that they are doing uh, because they learned this technology from factions of ETs that are service to self that they work with in the underground bases, uh, which I've seen in the underground bases these three different, actually four different types of ETs there. So, uh, yeah, they do, they do do that. Do 
people have any control over the experiences or is it kind of like losing all bodily function? You're in, you're in paralysis for sure. Uh, as I said earlier, really all I could move was my eyes. So in a couple of reasons I understand why they do that. One of the men in my group uh, was in a paralysis state. There was an ET, uh, it was a little gray light type thing, a uh, couple of them right around him, and he kept telling himself, I can move, I can do this, I can move, I can move, I can move. And the more he said he, he was able to, and he finally was able to break loose of whatever it was that controlled him, and he immediately swung at the alien closest. He heard this crackling sound, like something broke, and the other one scooped the, the other one off the book because it, it fell down scooped it up and it took off and they and they disappeared, you know, out of the room. So in some cases maybe they do it for their own preservation. And some cases, you know, because if you were uh like for instance I I have been levitated out a window. My kids saw me being levitated down the hall one night and um then one alien on one one gray on one side and one gray on another side, uh and then taken out through the window. So um, if I had been, you know, ranting and raving and moving around, they wouldn't be able to do that. So I, I think some of the reason they do that is for our protection as well as their own protection. Mm-hmm. Nisa is asking, how can we protect ourselves from the government prying into our dreams? Hmm, that is really a very hard one. It is really hard. You know, it's kind of like that uh, in the show, The Matrix. <laughs> um, when people went to sleep, they really went into reality. Our dreams are just as real as, as this reality. So it's pretty hard. Uh, you know, it's going to take a, a lot of intention and willpower. I would say it, it, every night, if you don't, if you feel that you can do it every night or whenever you want to do it, you know, put a protection um, energy around yourself. Um, this does not always work for people who are in psychotronic. And they they are hardwired, so therefore it doesn't work for them. But if you are just having interference dreams and you want them to stop, you are a spiritual being, you know, living this human life, and you have the ability to stop. It, you people have said and had experiences where they stopped ET experiences. If they can stop an ET experience, I think with their intention, they should be able to stop these experiences as well. Uh huh. So what happens when the government comes in and takes you? Where are they taking you? Well, I'll give you an experience. Um, I was. I woke one night in the in an, what was definitely an elevator um, going down. There were other people there. Again, I was in paralysis of some type, of, uh, but walking. So I wasn't. It wasn't for to say paralysis. I would say it was probably more uh, things like the the drugs that the I can't think of what it's called now. Here we go with that name thing. But um, the uh, the kind of drugs uh, like not like a The different types of drugs that they give people to to make them functional. They, they have street names for it uh, as, as roofies and such, and I can't think of what the, the legal name of it is. But we were standing there, and there was other people. I could hear people kind of kind of growing, and I saw a woman over here to the side. Uh, definitely, uh, she looked like she was in pajamas. I saw uh, a, another person, not with a thing, anything on at all, and stuff in the nude. Um, the doors opened. And out we were shuffled, and there were two waiting um, tall grays. Now these were like seven or six, probably six foot tall grays. They are kind of more of a beigey gray. Um, they were on one side. The military were on the other side. Some of us were shuffled off with them. And as I looked to, uh, with my eyes to where the other aliens were, my son. My oldest son was being taken 
that was the first time I realized he was being taken. And um, he woke up that next morning. He was like 14 years old and proceeded to tell me about his horrible dream he had uh, about aliens and under and being in an under. So, now I'll take you Matt Brown. Everything from um, Hell Alley and and. Uh, New Mexico, uh, say to S4, Fear, um, and all type of places, all kinds of places all over the world. It's weird, it, it's weird that you mention uh, the tan grays because the first extraterrestrial I ever saw, which was about a 10 to 12 foot being, was a tan gray type being. And that was two o'clock in the afternoon in a forest with an ET contactee friend of mine. Whoa! You're the fir- you're the first one that uh, I've ever heard on this show mention tan grays. Yeah, yeah, and then they're more of a yeah a tan color, and they're they're the taller ones, much taller. And um, there's no there's definitely a surface to self group there. I'm not saying yours experience was. Yours could have been different, especially since they were maybe not even the same one, a type, you know, because they were much taller. Those are much taller than mine. Mine was like six feet. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Either either way, it's quite intimidating. Well, you know what? It's intimidating when you have that type of an experience. It really is. And, you know, for most people, when they are getting taken out of their bedrooms at night, you know, at least you have the luxury of thinking, wow, that was a nightmare. But when you are making contact in the middle of the afternoon, seeing a being, and you know you are wide awake, it can be tough to take because you don't know how you're going to react. You don't know if they're going to take you. Are they positive? Are they negative? Are they you know, there to harm you? Are they there just to introduce themselves and say hello like strangers would? You know, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's you know, it's really a mind-melting experience because you don't know how you're going to react. And I always laugh at people when they sit there and say, Misha, oh, if I had that encounter, I'd get my camera out, I'd be taking photos, <laughs> you know, I'd walk right up to them and say hello, shake their hands, or try and ch- yeah. chase them down if they started running. Like, people are so brave until they're put into that situation, I guess is what I'm saying in the long run. Exactly. Very true, very true. You know, I'd love to be able to tell you a couple of ex- uh, the uh, experiences um if I have time about uh, the missing marriage where I had a complete missing marriage and then also where uh, Melinda Leslie and I were abducted after being on the Art Bell show. I would love for you to get that to that story after our break here at the bottom of the hour. We have only a couple minutes left. Let me get another question in from Claudia here, if you don't Uh, mind. If, If you can remote view can they see you remote viewing and do they know who you are? Are we talking about the government or are we talking about ET? Let's say either or. Um, Well, if they're, if they have remote viewers and remote viewers can definitely see that you're in the room. Yes. Uh, But that's not how it's supposed to work. How it's supposed to work is you remote view in and they can't see that you're there. They may be able to have a feeling that something's going on. Uh, I believe that some of, uh, especially um, my lab's experiences, are of uh, psychic MK, um, excuse me, psychic uh, remote viewing uh, experiences, actually. Hmm. Okay. Have you ever had contact with government during a remote viewing session? Have I had contact with government? Well, I don't purposely go out the remote viewing anymore because I that's not something I want to do. When I did the remote viewing, I did that my knowledge, or I should say my control of it. So they were causing me to remote view other people. So, um, but I will say I did have a situation where um, I was with some people and we were remote viewing 
I, I do remember this. So, uh, yeah, I guess I can answer yes to that. Because we remote viewing and we wanted to remote view uh, uh, S4, actually. And as we were remote, remoting in, um, all of a sudden there was this unpenetrable energy wall. It was, it was like, um, I don't know exactly how to explain it. It was just, no, it was like we were bouncing off. We could not get in at all. Um, and we know that they either had their remote viewers blocking us, their psychics blocking us, because it was not like a force field or anything. It was just, I mean, it was just amazing, the energy that was stopping us. It was a definite, I was some kind of a psychic energy. I, I believe it was there, in, unless it's some kind of a thing that they have to protect so nobody can come in remote viewing. That's a possibility. But we could not get through. When we had that night, we not uh, viewing uh, different things, you know, we'd be, gone to bases even, but not, uh, we couldn't. We could not get in for very heavy life. Misha, I'm going to get you to hold on for one final time tonight. We are talking with Misha Johnson. She is an MK Ultra My Lab experiencer, and she also helps other people who are having the experience as well. We're going to get more into her experiences right after this break. You're listening to Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We'll be right back. Want to find out what's coming up on the Spaced Out Radio Network? Go to spacedoutradio.com where you can find our daily list of shows and guests appearing throughout the week. Want to tell us your story? Be sure to sign up for the Spaced Out Forum for free. Maybe you have a psychic question. Drop in and say hi to Catherine in Cat's Corner. Spacedoutradio.com, your 24-hour source for UFOs, ghosts, conspiracies, and more. Check it out today. Are you one of many who's had a UFO or ET experience? Listen up. The AZ UFO Show is on every Sunday night at 7 on the Spaced Out Radio Network. We talk about UFO sightings across the globe, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, and more with me, Rich Giordano. I want you to know what's going on in the skies above you, so tune in to the AZ UFO Show on Spaced Out Radio Network on spacedoutradio.com right before Spaced Out Weekend. Our show is literally out of this world. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Brand new discovery beats NASA. This is Patrick Webster Small bringing you the Webster Phenomena every Monday night at 8 p.m. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to talk about amazing stuff. Have amazing guests. That's all that is, man. You know the rest as E.T. is up in the sky. I'm going to tell you which way and why. We're going to have a little combo about these ETs in the sky. We're going to chill. This is Patrick Webster Small, and I'll be seeing you every Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Write it down on Spaced Out Radio. Is the 24-hour world starting to wear you down? Let me, from Rivulet Reiki and Ratings, lend you a hand. Hi, this is Jolene, and if you're in need of Reiki or a realm rating, come to my website. Rivulet rr.wix.com forward slash rivulet r and r and let us help you out. At Rivulet, I specialize in healing your body, mind, and soul, no matter where you are. And be sure to check out the Rivulet R and R Facebook page for your best deal. Remember, it's time for you to make some time for you. Hi there, this is Jim Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekend. When you've had a busy week and you're just wanting to chill out and relax, how about listening into my show? 
That's right, Spaced Out Weekend. I focus on the paranormal, the arcane. I even dip into the techie side of things and much, much more. And I would love for you to come in and check it out. Remember, Spaced Out Radio goes seven days a week. Dave Scott, Monday through Friday, and me, Jim Tyson, rolling through the weekends. I look forward to having you stop by for a listen every Saturday and Sunday night, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific, only on Spaced Out Radio. Miss most of tonight's show? Don't worry, you didn't miss a thing. You can head to our website, where you can download the podcast at spacedoutradio.com. Now, back to tonight's show. Here's Dave Scott. Welcome back to the final half hour of Space Out Radio. Tonight, I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're in the packed chat room of Space Out Radio or Paranormal Into the Night or Paranormal Forum, thank you so much for being with us. Totally appreciate your questions for tonight. Or if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Space Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Space Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our Space Out Radio group as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, S O R. YouTube channel is Space Out Radio Show, and our website is spaceoutradio.com. Tomorrow night on the show, our Keith Andrews will be joining us. It is his monthly interview with Keith where we talk about all things alien. It'll be a lot of fun. It always is. Your participation is required because it's a lot of fun. Tonight we are talking with Misha Johnson. She is a professional when it comes to dealing with my labs and mk ultra now misha i want to focus in on a couple of stories that you have let's talk about the marriage that you do not recall this totally flabbergasts me i i need some detail on this okay well it, it does me too uh in uh 1968 uh i was at a college uh, with some other people, we were in the cafeteria, a man walked up to us and said, um, hey, you want to make some money? I, I have this sleep program. It's a dream program. And, you know, we just, if you, if you come over to this, uh, this place off the, right off the campus, it's just real close. You can make extra money. So I went there, and that was the last thing I can remember. I was walking in that door. And I remember nothing else until eight months later when I was sitting in a bus and had no idea what was where I was or what I was where I was going and I, I looked and found this ticket and it said that I was uh Misha Rose. Except I went by a different name, so I'm not gonna give that name. Uh but um Misha Rose, but the last name being Rose, and I didn't go, oh, this isn't my ticket, but that's my first name. What What is that? I don't, I don't understand it. And that I had this program that clicked on in my head, basically, that, oh, yeah, well, you were married. Um, your husband was a Navy Marine corpsman going to medical school, and he decided to... He didn't want to be married anymore. He sent you home on a bus. That, that was the plan, this program that was in my head. It didn't make any sense to me because I didn't remember any kind of wedding. I remember nothing. I didn't remember this man. So I rode the very long, long trip back from Seattle to um, to Blackfoot, Hood, Idaho, or I think it was Polk Star, Idaho, where they picked me up. And um, my family picked me up at the, at the bus in depot and proceeded to tell me that I, the last time they had seen me was um, some, I think, oh, let me see what date was that I have to look at my thing here. I think it was February of 1968, um, and they hadn't seen me until then. Um, And last time they saw me, they went to my wedding with a man they didn't like. They thought he was evil. My sister thought he was just, terribly evil, and in fact, um, she told a story about how 
I was babysitting, and supposedly he was with me babysitting her child, and she came home, and he had all these candles and this, he had this uh, um, candles all around in this um, uh, pentagon circle in the middle of the living room. Now, I, I mean, have no memory of that as well, but she told me how she hated him, and she hated. She was very angry at me as, as well, and um, so I had no memory there. Also, I, I like I said, I, I walked down an aisle with him. I had a wedding dress. My family, my parents came to the wedding, which was crazy because they told me um, there in the car on the way home. They said, "You called us." in um, January uh, and said that you were going to get, you're getting engaged and to put a, a an announcement, an engagement announcement in the paper. And so we did. And now here it is. I can't remember the date. Isn't that crazy? I can't remember the date. But I have it here. I have my license here <laughs> um, of when I was married. Um, but um was... I think it was like um, April, maybe maybe, maybe not even April. Uh, I ended up getting, no, I would got, no, it was February, I just not thought. It was February that I got married. Um, I have date problems, too. That's another thing that the, a block they put in there as well. But um, January, so within one month's time of meeting this man, supposedly, like my, my family said, and I was getting married, and um, they were attending my wedding. I had no memory of it whatsoever. What finally came out for me in beginning trying to find out what had happened to me is um, I went to a therapist to try to find out what had happened. I did. They did some hypnotherapy. They blo- broke through some really severe blocks that I had uh, been taken into a sleep program. Yes, the sleep program was called the driving program. And in the driving program, they put you to sleep and they start doing mind control and programming you in your sleep. That means you're asleep for not just, you know, hours, but days and weeks, sometimes even months. Um, I had memory that would were flashing, memories would flash, and I had a memory that I was in uh, some kind of a facility. I woke up. Uh, it was pitch dark. I heard people moaning and groaning. Uh, I was having the most excruciating headache. It was just unbelievable. Um, but I heard people groaning and crying. And um, then I, I was back. Time when I told you about the experience where we were taken to the um, big uh, mansion and, and used as party favors. That was that same time. So I had that memory. I had. That, Another, the only other memory I had was that um, I was told that I was quarantined in my house and that I had encephalitis. Well, now encephalitis is a brain disease uh, starting of meningitis for uh, babies. And in fact, I researched this and found out that it, it had all. It, 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 it's really for babies. It's not. It's not an adult disease. So. Um, I don't believe that was just a cover story, I'm sure. So anyway, I found out uh, during hypnosis, and this wasn't until just uh, about two years ago, that um, I, the therapist was talking to me and said, this is really important time. How come you don't remember your, your, your wedding? And all of a sudden she said, they, your eyes popped open. They looked very weird. And she said, you put this, you had this grin on your face, and then of course I listened to the recording, and it says, well, because it wasn't her wedding, it was mine, and this person proceeded that, which was my altar, proceeded to tell her about the wedding and how I was asleep, like I was supposed to be. So this is what I found. This was the first time I found out really that I actually had altars. Um, before then, it was just blanks of memory. So I, I I would say, and I, I like to share this experience because I'd like to know if there's other people out there that have missing um, times in their lives, months, year, you know, even weeks at a time or something. 
Uh, at that same time, I, I went and got an injury to my foot that the program in my head said that I stepped on a um, a beer or a piece of glass in on the beach. Well, at the time that happened, there was that I was in Pocatello, and my family remembers my sister who lived there in Pocatello. She remembers I had this cast on my foot, and the story was I was it was on a beach. Well, there's no beach in Pocatello, Idaho, so um, they were transporting me back and forth. I'm sure prior to that. Then I had um, another time, then 1969 to 70, where a phone rang. I was living in Utah. The next thing I remember um, is nothing. I remember uh, nine months later, my brother knocking on my door, at, and I was living in San Francisco. So there was another eight months missing there. And through that time, I have um, um, Bohemian Grove memories. I have... Um, a lot of the satanic and the ritual stuff. That is my uh, first memory of, um, no, I'm sorry, that's not my first memory. My first memory of seeing other aliens in a ritual ceremony was um, in Seattle where I saw, uh, I was in under, um, it was some kind of a cave there and I believe it was right at the same time that that big party went on, possibly after it, from what I gather. And we were in a cave, and there was a lot of us in this cave. There was the one guy that looked like what you might call um, a reptilian devil. He was just horrible looking. I, I can't explain him. He, was, he looked like he's a reptilian in my mind. And, you know, he was reptilian and, and devil was the same thing. He could have just been a reptilian. Then there was another another man standing beside him was a like a colonel uh, in, in in brass. He had brass on his shoulders. And then there were cloaked people and a ceremony and ritual going on below, which I was um, part of the you know the whatever it was they were doing to us. I can't really tell you what it was because a lot of that is blocked out and I really don't have to remember the details. I don't really care to remember the details to tell you the truth. So that kind of brings us uh, up till... um, uh, Well, any questions on that? (laughs) A a lot of me... And I don't mean this question to sound uh, insulting, but a lot of people will say, you know what, it's the 60s. There was a lot of hallucinogenics around. How do you know that you weren't just being drugged by whether it was government officials or someone else in regards to these experiences rather than my lab projects or something along those lines? Um, Because Charlie, who was the handler and the husband came back into the picture in the 69 after the divorce that I'd had with him. I ended you know, up divorcing him from a, a distance, you know, when I got back to Idaho. Um, he also was my handler like, once again in the 69 um, to 70 time. Um, in fact, I have a memory of this was during that First, that I woke up where um, he was talking to somebody and he said, don't worry, I do my job. Don't I always bring them in? I'll do my job. She'll be there in time. Um, And so I I know he was a Navy Marine corpsman. He had the ability um, to drug me. Um, He did drug me, yeah. Yeah, he drugged me. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And uh, But I know that I saw military. I know in, in these parties. I know I saw them in the ceremonies. I saw I saw um, dignitaries. I saw politicians. What else, I, can, in, I can't imagine what else it, it could be describing besides this kind of thing. And, of course, back in the uh, 69s, 70s, and then... Um, Periodically, from time to time, I had memories of uh, being flown here and there. In fact, I, I, guess I was 
I, I hated flying when I before I even knew that I had been flying all over the place. Um, but I, I hated I hated helicopters. I had memories of being taken in helicopters, taking places. Um, so yeah, I definitely it was it was not just hallucinogenic drugs. It was, it was, right. Now we have a lot of former Art Bell listeners listening to us tonight as. They're now looking for us to bring that type of programming, which I'm so thankful for that they've found us. I would love it if you could tell the incident of what happened to you and Melinda Leslie after your appearance on Coast to Coast with Art. Okay. Well, I wasn't. I was with George Signal. Sigal. He. Uh, it was when Art was about to leave, and George Sigal had taken over. So um, that was the time that we were on. Um, during the show, um, someone had asked me about an underground base, and I pre- I think he said something about aliens, and I proceeded to tell him and uh, about the reptilians that I saw under the ground, under the, in the bases and such as that. And at the moment, I I no sooner got the word reptilian out of my mouth when my phone line went down completely. Now Melinda Leslie, who is a well-known researcher in the my lab uh, and that she speaks all over and uh, she will be on my radio show very soon next next month actually but she um, was also abducted uh, and but at any rate uh, how that happened okay so we're both on the radio show we're at my house she um, her her radio her, te- her telephone continues on but mine goes off so I was scrambling to get uh, another uh, phone and finally got one about 15, 20 minutes later and got back into the show. By then, that, mess, that, that question was gone, and so the subject matter of aliens and underground bases never came up again. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, I've listened to it, and I believe the word reptilian got out before they knocked me off. Uh, so then... Um, not that night, but the next night, because she stayed overnight at my house one more night uh, after the show, because uh, we were getting ready for a conference that we're going to be speaking at, and we were writing a book uh, together. Um, the book, of course, was uh, is called was called I should say, um, the covert military harassment. Oh, good grief. Surveillance, interrogation, and mind control of the extraterrestrial abduction experience. Um, and uh, when we were talking to special forces, ex-military, uh, people who had ET experience, people who had my lab experience, and we were compiling all this information to, to write this book. We had talked about that on the show, if I remember right, but in any case, they knew we were writing the book. Um, so... About that night, like I said, but the next the next night she it stayed over, and that morning uh, I came out of my bedroom and she was sleeping on the couch, and my coffee table was broken. I said, "Hey, Melinda, how did my coffee table get broken?" She thought, "I don't have any idea. I, I don't know. I didn't break it." And so it was just kind of left unsaid. She had to go back to to Laguna, and and uh, when she got home, I guess she was feeling really weird, and so she went to the therapist and had a regression. At the same time, I felt like something was wrong. There was something definitely wrong. Uh, first of all, I'd seen my coffee table was broken, and she said she had nothing to do with it. So strange things had happened in my life, so I, I went to my therapist as well and had a regression. And both of our... Um, Regressions, which we, we uh, didn't even talk to each other until about a week later. About um, we, my experience was, I was awakened by two men in um, uh, black uniforms with night vision. They basically drug me out of my bedroom and down the stairs and put me in a van. Uh, she had the same memory uh, that uh, she was being drug out of the couch, and she's a little bit stronger woman, and she uh, kind of got awake a little bit more, and she was disoriented, and she actually um, fell on my coffee table. And then she was drugged down the stairs and taken and put on in the van. 
while we were in the van, she has more memory of this than I do. The only thing I remember is waking up uh, at, at a point where there was, uh, we were stopped, there was some light seemed to be coming in uh, from somewhere, um, and then the next thing I remember, I'm out again, next thing I remember, I'm in a room and there's this guy in the military uniform. Um, he's pacing back and forth and cussing me out and saying, that's it, you're not going to be talking about this, it's over you're not going to finish this book. You and Melinda are done. You're not going to. We have warned you, which they had. Uh, I, I haven't got time to go into all the warnings that we'd had, but they warned him, and um, I doubt, actually already had two automobile accidents, uh, one with her in, no, one automobile accident with her in the car. Um, and then I'd also have been robbed, uh, had the, my, my, uh, uh, my purse stolen, different things like that. So, And then I'd also been told a few times that I needed to stop talking. But anyway, so um, he was carrying on and, and screaming about that. And he said, and you need to go home, back home, and get yourself a husband and forget about this because it's not going to bring you, any, bring you any happiness. And he said, to bring the point home, I want to show you. I want you to meet someone. And in walks this, uh, and if people are looking at my website, they can see this tall, gold-green type of alien, uh, looking more like a dragon with a long tail. He came in. He knelt down, uh, bent down and looked into my eyes. It's kind of like a, a mind melt that they do, which I've had happen to me in the underground bases by other reptilians, but he did this. <clears throat> and he put into my head this horrible vision of my family. Uh, with me standing there and uh, my these guys in black like ninja uniform just chopping up my family, my, my kids and my grandkid, child. And um, then for some odd reason, it was like I was not connected into it anymore. Something kind of pulled me out and because I couldn't hear screaming, all I could see was this imagery, uh, like a hologramic imagery that I was in. But uh, then I kind of broke the connection, and I don't really know what happened, whether he walked away, left, I went out, I don't know. That was the last memory I had. The same that happened to me, she had an incident where they had her in the room, and um, an alien same kind of thing. They were cussing her out and everything, and then they brought an alien in. Uh, it was a reptilian. Uh, she described him a lot the same as mine, and she said he looked into her eyes and had this imagery of um, raping her and tearing her to pieces. Um, so um, that was what we each found out. Well, we also found out that they had jimmied my front door, so I actually <clears throat> took pictures, and uh, she came in back that week, next, next week, and we took pictures and saw where they had done it. I have pictures of that. Um, and then after that, they came again. This time they sent this crazy man after me, and then again they came in and told me again to shut up because we hadn't. We decided we're not going to, uh, partly because... Um, because um, uh, John Mack, and uh, I can never remember his name, the other, the other gentleman, a um, lawyer, he, uh, they both told us at the convention that we ended up at that we needed to finish this book that was really important. So we decided, no, nope, we're not going to quit. So we didn't quit. And then I had an, the, another um, incident where I was warned again, and this time he made it threat to my family <clears throat> in the desert and bodies in the desert type of thing. <clears throat> and so I <clears throat> decided that was it. <clears throat> not going to not turn into my family anymore. And uh, so I went home that weekend. On my way home, I was ran off the road with a, by an unmarked van. And fortunately, my car did not flip over. Uh, I was protected by my angels and my ETs as far as I'm concerned. They, they're the ones that protected and saved me. I got 
finally got to my family's house, <clears throat> and it gave them, you know, I told them I was quitting and I'm through with it and and you never have to worry about it again. And then I, uh, incidentally, my car was drivable uh, because of my very good driving skills. So the truckers told me because they were watching me and said they couldn't believe that I stayed uh, from not flipping over. But uh, anyway, uh, I got back and went to the rental, got my rental car um, on the way across town to turn you know, in the books to my uh, one of my therapists, and tur- and I was going to give him all the books I had. Uh, I was hit broadside and spun around three times in a car. And once again, warned to stop, and so I did. So for mm-hmm. quite a few years, I got out of it. But I wasn't out of it because they were still accessing me. I was just not following my mission. And they back in, I came back to it in 2004 again. Misha, I hate to say this, but we only got about a minute left in the show. I would love it if you took the time to explain where people can find your radio show, your groups for contact, whether it's Aliens, whether it's MK Ultra, whether it's My Labs, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, well, they can find me at starfeedawakening.org. That's my website. I put it together. Uh, actually, it's my second one because I was hacked once, and so I lost uh, the professional one, so that's the one I did. So I apologize for it. Uh, it's in the process of being worked on. Also, they can go to Facebook and go to Starseed Awakening ET Contact Experiencer Group, or they can go to Starseed Awakening uh, Group. Um, uh, they can also go to MKL through DID, My Lab Monarch, Super Soldiers, Target TI, Ritual Abuse and uh, Support Group. That's also on uh, Facebook. <clears throat> they can email me at starmation 99 yahoocom um, please come to my group. Sunday, I have a group for both the first uh, two hours and for two hours are for MK Ultra in my lab, and that is through Zoom. So all they have to do is go to my uh, Facebook, and they'll see the events, and then just uh, they can uh, accept, you know, come on and join the event, and then I'll send them a link. And then every Thursday, I have an MK Ultra group that they can also go to. I also have two groups here locally at my home for people who are experiencers in my labs and MKLTRIPS. Misha Johnson, thank you so much for being on Space Out Radio. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Now, oh, and I have a KTOR radio show every every Saturday from 12 to 2, KTOR and Radio. Listen to it, KCOR, KCOR Radio Online. It's a great show. I listen to it on Saturdays as well. Misha, thank you so much for being on Space Out Radio tonight. It's always a pleasure to have a talk with you. Thank you, David. Do you have a topic or guest you'd like to hear on Spaced Out Radio? Email us, dave at spacedoutradio.com. Send us a quick message on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio or a message on our Facebook page, Spaced Out Radio. Once again, here's Dave Scott. And once again, I want to thank Misha Johnson for being on Spaced Out Radio tonight. Absolute pleasure to have her. The stories that she's had to live through is just a nightmare for most of us. And, you know, we always wish and pray for the best for her because she is just an outstanding person putting all their energy in towards helping other people so they don't have to go through what she went through. Tomorrow night on Spaced Out Radio, a good friend of Misha's and a good friend of this show's, our Keith Andrews will be back with his monthly alien talk. Always a fun time when Keith is on the show. Get in the chat rooms early. Get your questions ready for Keith tomorrow night. Hey, we'll be back in exactly 22 hours. We'll be back in the hot seat here in Space Out Radio Land before I disappear into the wilderness for the weekend and James Tyson steps into the hot seat. Good night. Hopefully my voice will sound better tomorrow, and we'll check it out tomorrow night. Take care.